just to put people on the side if we don't see them anywhere. Oh, so this part that I can see. Um, see where you have people and people in the waiting area. Uh, Isn't it all? Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, so I can uh, gallery view. What's that? Well, I, I, do you guys hear me? Thumbs up if you hear me. Give me thumbs up if you hear me. I see one thumbs up. I can hear you, but how do you get to me? I need to be in the middle here. Okay. Oh. All right. Hey guys. Well, I need you could be over top that's the middle. Okay, but I need to be inside. So how do I do that? Okay, we're gonna start in one minute, but I need thumbs up again if you hear me. Okay, excellent. I'm soon I'm gonna have to put you up. Yeah. Okay. All right, I want to say hello to everyone. I need everyone to wave to me on the side here. Okay. And I want to share with you a couple of stories. I know everyone is behaving and being amazing to their parents. I want to tell you a story called Once Upon a Summer. So I know that I look forward to the summer a lot. When I, I was younger, I lived in New York City. And in the summer, I would travel two hours to go to a bungalow colony. Has anyone ever heard of a, a bungalow colony before? A bungalow colony is where a lot of people have little homes and they share a tennis court and a swimming pool. And it's a lot of fun. And the place was, the place was called Moonlight. And I had a great time. And a lot of my friends, they went to bungalow colonies in different places, and, and some of them went, went to sleepaway camp. Anyone here have ever gone to sleepaway camp before? Raise your hand if you've gone to sleepaway camp. Sleepaway camp is, I think, when you get into grade five or when you get into grade six. I actually went to sleepaway camp when I was going into grade three. I was just a little kid, and my parents let me send me to sleepaway camp. But after years of therapy, I realized that my parents actually loved me. But sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you stay in the city for the summer. Now, I think staying in the city for the summer is not such a bad thing because everyone's not in the city. So all the things you wanted to do, has anyone ever gone to Ripley's, the aquarium? Well, if you go there on a regular Sunday, there's so many people there you can't spend any time looking at the beautiful fish that Hashem made all the different types of fish and sharks and this because there's so many people but if you stay at home for the summer you get to go to Ripley's and there's not a lot of people there because everyone's in sleepwood camp or everyone's in Muskoka so sometimes if you're staying in the city is is actually a nice thing and you can go to a baseball game in the summer and there's not a lot of people there because everyone's away but sometimes people get very upset they're staying in the city for the summer. 
Why would they get upset? Well, imagine if you're in this class where there's 20 children in your class. Does anyone have 20 children in their class? Around 20 children? I have around, I actually don't go to school anymore. I haven't gone to school in many years. But when I was growing up, we had sometimes 20 and sometimes 25 and sometimes 30 kids in the class. And even, maybe even sometimes we were lucky we only had 15 kids in the class. Parents always just say, oh, you're so lucky there's only 15 kids in the class. But I liked it when there were 30 kids in the class. That way the teacher wouldn't notice me when I misbehaved. <laughs> now, <clears throat> staying at home for the summer, some people say, hey, I like staying home for the summer. But some people, they are, if they're in a class and all, all of their classmates went away for the summer and they all went to, to places far away where it was cooler and breezier and I had to stay in the city and all my friends went away for the summer, would that be a reason for me to feel sad? Raise your hand if that would be a reason for you to feel sad if all your friends went away and you didn't go away. Some of you say, well, I don't care what my friends are doing as long as I'm having fun. The fact that they're in a, maybe in a place having more fun, I'm happy for them. I'm having fun and they're having fun. But I wanna tell you a story about a boy named Abraham. And Abraham was in grade five and one time in April, which is coming up, all of his friends were in school talking about what they were doing for the summer. And Yitzchak was going to this bungalow colony, and Yaakov was going to California to visit his grandparents. And all the boys were going to all the different places all over the place. And then when they finally came to Avram and they said, Avram, what are you doing this summer? He was very embarrassed. And he said, well, I'm staying at home for the summer. And I said, well, what, what are you doing when you're staying at home? What do you do? Everyone's away. And he said, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to stay home. And they said, oh, okay, well, have a good time. No, none of the brothers, none of the other kids in the class made fun of him. But by their reaction, they were like, you know, well, okay. But Avram felt very, very sad. And he came home. Now, the reason why Avram didn't go away for the summer, even though all of his friends went away for the summer, because Avram's parents would have liked for him to go away for the summer, but they couldn't afford to get him to go to sleep away camp. It was too much money for them. So they said, Avram, you can have a lot of fun in camp. In fact, there's one other kid that's a grade ahead of you. He's also not going away for the summer. And maybe you can hang out with him. You can go bike riding. I guess there was no day camp in that, in that particular neighborhood because that wasn't even an option to go to day camp. A lot of people stay in the city and there's really, really good day camps to go to. But in this neighborhood, there were no day camps to go to. So he would wake up in the morning and I guess he would dive in and he would probably brush his teeth and then he, you know, he would do nothing. Well, April and May and June came and everyone graduated that grade they were in and everyone went away. But Abraham stayed home. And the, can you imagine the first day there's no school, you should be excited, right? But Abraham, he wasn't excited. He was just very sad. And he had breakfast very slowly. He had breakfast like this. Very, very slowly. That's slow, right? He had breakfast very slowly. And his mother, who was about to go to work, because both his mother and father worked because they needed to make money to pay for all their bills, the mother said, well, why don't you get together with that boy who's a great ahead of you? His name is Chaskel. Get together with Chaskel. Chaskel is a very tough name for it to now. It has a ch in it. Can anyone say Chaskel? Chaskel. It is not an easy name to pronounce. And Avram didn't really like to hang out with Chaskel because even though Avram really didn't know Chaskel, he didn't know him to be a nice guy or not nice guy, he had seen Chaskel. And a lot of people didn't hang out with Chaskel. And Chaskel always looked a little messy. Sometimes when you go to school in the morning, your mother makes you look nice, or your father says, tuck yourself in, and you have schmutz over here and schmutz over there, and make your hair look good, and, and you go to school really looking nice. Well, Chaskel always went to school a little bit schlumpy like this, and he had to stain over here, and he was a little bit aw. He didn't really look nice, Chaskel, and he smelled a little, you know? Woo. No, no one liked to hang out with Chaskel. He smelled. Woo. So when you spoke to Chaskel, you're like, Chaskel, how you doing? Uh, you would hold your nose, but you would pretend to be going. <laughs> but really, you were like this because he didn't like to hang out with Chaskel. 
Costco smelled a little bit. Because Costco came to school every day a little bit schmutzy, and also Costco came to school every day a little bit smelly. But and, and none of the boys, it seemed, ever played with Costco during recess. So Avram knew that Costco was not someone he wanted to hang out with the whole summer. And he knew for sure that Costco was not someone he wanted to hang out with even for one minute. But then lo and behold, Avram was sitting on the steps right outside his house and he, he was continuing to eat his bowl of cereal. He was continuing to eat his bowl of cereal really slowly when along came in a bicycle going across Costco. Costco was actually passed by Abram's house. And Costco goes, hey, what, why aren't you in sleepaway camp? Why aren't you in, in the cottage? What are you doing here? And Abram said, well, I'm here for the summer. And Costco said, I can't believe it. I'm also here for the summer. That's crazy that we would bump into each other. We can hang out together. Well, this is exactly what Abram did not want. Abram was upset not going away. And not only that, but Avram was upset that now he has to hang out with the one person in the whole school he didn't want to hang out with, Costco, Costco, the messy, smelly guy. But Avram was nice, and he really didn't want to embarrass Costco. So he said, Costco, uh, okay, well, let's hang out today. <clears throat> Avram wasn't committing to hanging out with Avram any other day but today, but he says, well, let's hang out today. Costco said, great idea. I have this really cool bike, and you can, we can go to a park and you can ride it for five minutes and I can ride it for five minutes. Now, the fact is Avram didn't own a bike. Avram's parents were poor and Avram couldn't even own a bike. So he was actually real excited now that he gets to use Costco's bicycle. And they had fun. And that was like from 10 to 12. And then it was time for lunch. And Costco said, why don't you come over to my house to have lunch? <clears throat> well, Avram was a little bit nervous because if Costco was messy and smelly, I wonder what his house was. But he didn't want to embarrass Costco. So he said, yeah, no problem. Let's go over to your house. And when Abram went into the house, he was shocked. He was so shocked he couldn't believe it. In his house, he realized that Costco was a very, very special boy because Costco's father was yelling the whole time. Costco's father was yelling the whole time on the phone towards everyone he spoke to. Costco was yelling, Costco's father was yelling the whole time at Costco's mother. He seemed like not the nicest person. He was always yelling and yelling and putting everyone down. And he would tell his wife, <clears throat> you don't do this enough. <clears throat> you don't do this enough. And he was always yelling at Costco, Costco, I can't, can't believe you're my son. You don't do this, you don't do that. And Abraham wanted to hide. He was so embarrassed. I mean, people aren't necessarily the nicest people, but if there's a stranger in the house, you want to make sure everyone thinks you're nice. But Costco's father, he was just a very, very mean person. And even when I'm saying the story over, all of our hearts are sinking right now. Poor Costco. I know now why he's a little messy and he's a little smelly, because he's actually living in a very, very tough place. He's living in a home where his father has a very, very yelling attitude. Now, no one really knows this because when, when, Costco's father go, when Costco's father goes out, he acts nice, but in his house, he was really mean. So everyone thought Costco's father was a nice guy. They couldn't understand why Costco wasn't all put together. But now he knew Costco's father only pretended to be a nice guy, but really he was a meanie. And then Abram said, if I can be Costco's friend this summer, I would be doing the biggest mitzvah. Because Haskell has no friends. I can be Haskell's friends. Maybe that's why Hashem wanted me to stay home for the summer. So I can be friends with Haskell because now I see Haskell is amazing. Consider where he's coming from. He's, he's pretty normal. He's not so messy considering he has such a bad father. A mean father. He's not so messy. He's not so swampy. He's not so smelly. He's a good guy, Haskell. When he came home that day, he told his mother, Avram, 
Avram's mother said, Avram, how was your day hanging out with Haskell? And Avram's mother was thinking, Avram would say, I'm just going to hang out with Haskell today, but that's it. I'm not hanging out with him anymore. He's messy and he's smelly and no one really talks to him. But Avram told his mother, I think I found a new friend. So the next morning, Avram and Haskell started on the bike together and they were playing and they were having a good time and Avram started to see that Haskell is such a special guy. If only people will see how amazing he is. And then an old man exited a shul. Now this shul was not a big shul. It was not a medium shul. It was not a small shul. In fact, it was the teeniest shul he ever saw. You couldn't even notice it on the block because on the block there were buildings and buildings and then there was a door that led to a basement. And that was a shul. In fact, they named the shul not Beis Avram or Beis Yitzchak or Beis Sarah. They actually named the shul Beis Men. I got some smiles there. Beis Men, because it was a basement. And they went into the basement. And the old man said, come, we need your help. And they came down to the basement. And there were 10 old men davening. And they said, boys, can you help us? Because we were very, very weak. And we have a hard time going to the refrigerator in the back and bringing out milk and cereal for us after we daven in the morning. And the boy said, sure, we'd love to help you out. And the whole summer, Abraham and Haskell started their day going to the shul called Basemen, and then they would help all the old people. But you know, young people don't really hang out with old people. But Avram and Haskell now were hanging out with all of these old people that everyone forgot about. But Avram and Haskell made friends with all the people in the shul. All the people in the shul became friendly with Avram and Haskell. So the summer was going by so quickly that one day Avram's mother said, do you believe it? In one week from now, all of your friends are going to come home from the cottage. All of your friends are going to come home from the mountains. All of your friends are going to come home from sleepaway camp. Aren't, can't you believe it? The summer must have felt so long for you because you only had one friend. And Avram said, Ma, you don't understand. The summer went by. It was felt like one day. I can't believe it's been seven weeks. And he was hanging out with Haskell one day. And Haskell said, you know, this morning, there were only nine men in shul. I wonder what happened to Mr. Epstein. Now, Mr. Epstein was one of the 10 people that used to go to shul every day because they needed 10 men to make a minion. And Avram said, I don't know. It's very funny. They always show up and Mr. Epstein didn't show up. So Haskell said, maybe we should go visit him. And Avram said, that's a great idea. That's a big mitzvah visiting people. Now, we're living in a time where it's a mitzvah not to visit people because we're living in a very strange time because of corona. But normally, it's a very, very big mitzvah to visit people. And Mr. Epstein didn't show up to shul. So they got in there. They got in, one guy rode a bike and the other guy jogged next to him. I sometimes like jogging next to the person riding the bicycle. I like jogging. So he's jogging next to him and, and Costco's on the bike bicycling and Avram's next to him biking. And they start looking around and they say, oh my gosh, this is no longer a nice neighborhood. They were in a nicer neighborhood with lots of people that were smiling. And as they're going, they realize Mr. Epstein lives, looks like he lives in a very dangerous neighborhood. And there were young kids and they started to see uh, people hanging out on the block that were very, very, looked very scary and mean. But this is where Mr. Epstein lives. And they're about to go into Mr. Epstein's building when four or five young men said, hey, what are the Jews doing here? Well, when Haskell and Avram heard that, they were actually really scared. What, what are the Jews doing here? Jews shouldn't be in this neighborhood. It's a little bit scary. Oh, you're visiting Mr. Epstein. We haven't seen him the whole day. Usually he comes out every morning to go to that prayer place. But he didn't come out this morning. You came to check on him, hey? And Avram and Chesko said, hmm, yeah, well, yeah. So they, they, they moved into the house and, and they knocked on the door to Mr. Epstein's house and Mr. Epstein didn't answer. And they're like, what's going on? Mr. Epstein, he's in the house. I mean, the meanies outside just said Mr. Epstein didn't leave, so he must be in the house. So they tried to open the door, but the door was locked. And they said, well, maybe we should just go home, right? Avram said, Chesko, maybe we should go home. And Chesko said to Avram, yeah, maybe, maybe we should 
to go home. Uh, but we can't leave because Mr. Epstein, well, what's wrong with him? So they banged more and uh, no one answered. And they, and they said, well, maybe we should leave. And then one of them, and then Chasel said, well, maybe we shouldn't leave. I see down the hall, there's a door that says maintenance worker, maintenance. And I see a person working there. So they walked to the end of the hallway in the apartment building and, and they said, excuse me, sir. He said, yes, how can I help you? My name is Fabio, what do you want from me? And they said, well, uh, you know what, you know, we, we don't really, we're not related to Mr. Epstein, but we, we need to check on him. We need to see if he's okay because every day he prays with us and uh, we, we don't know where he is. And it seems from the boys outside that he's in the house, but he's not answering. Pablo said, well, uh, I can't really open the door. It's, uh, it's his place, but uh, you seem to be like two good kids. I will open the door and see what's going on with Mr. Epstein. So Pablo came out of the maintenance room. He had a master key and he opened the door and they opened the door and Pablo, Avram, and Hasel couldn't believe it. Mr. Epstein was lying on the floor unconscious. He had gotten very sick and he was holding the telephone, but he didn't have enough strength to call. And Haskell quickly put his ear to Mr. Epstein's mouth and he heard, he heard a little faint breathing. And he knew, oh my gosh, Mr. Epstein's very sick. So Haskell quickly took the phone and he called up Hatsala. And Hatsala quickly came and then the ambulances came after and they did CPR to Mr. Epstein and they quickly took him to the hospital and Mr. Epstein was alive. In fact, one of the doctors came over to Chaskal and Avram, Dr. Schwartz, and he said, Chaskal and Avram, thank you so much for waiting in the hospital. You should go home by now. But I wanna tell you something. If you had gone to Mr. Epstein's house one hour later, Mr. Epstein would have passed away. But because you visited him when you visited him, and not only that, you didn't even have to visit him. You said, let's go visit Mr. Epstein to see what happens to Mr. Epstein. Mr. Epstein is alive today because of both of you. And two days later, when they went back, back to shul again, Avram Chasko, there were 10 old men in shul, and one of them was Mr. Epstein. Now, the first day of school in September, when all the boys came back to school, everyone said, oh, I went to this place, I went to that place, I went to this place, and I did all these things. And they went to Avram. And they said, Avram, what did you do? You, oh, that's right, you, you stayed home. We're sorry about that. And Avram said to his friend, don't be sorry for me. I had the best summer of my life. In fact, I had the best summer anyone could have ever had. And so, my friends, it's so important to realize that no matter where you are, whether you're going away for the summer or whether you're not going away for the summer, and now all of us are having this special time where we're all in our houses, we have to remember that greatness and all of the special things that happen to us are not because we go to this place or that place. Special things happen all the time. We just have to open our eyes and see all the special things that we have in our own home. I want to wish everyone a great day and thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye, everyone. I'm going to unmute you. Hold on. Does anyone want to wish me a good day? Hi, Rabbi Ellie. Have a good day, everyone. Have a good day. A good day. Thank you. That was great. Thank you so much for listening to the story. Be Thank right. you. And everyone be, good. everyone be good to their mommy and their daddy and each other and the brothers and the sisters. Have a great day. And, and try not to eat junk food the whole day, okay? Just a little bit of junk food. Not a lot of junk food, okay? Mwah, mwah, mwah. I love you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Going on. Yes. Especially.